everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. I'm not sure I'm ready for this. Today we are going to take a look at this. The Geekworm X1011 uh, basically PCIe to 4 M.2 NVMe SSD shield. This is what I got. I have no clue what's going on inside. I ordered it with the fastest possible shipping so we are going to see uh, what is inside this is 21 dollars so if you're not in rush that's what you're gonna get so once you open it this is what you will see there's a bunch of screws i assume those are for the nvme and the hat and once we take this out there's nothing else on the box so remove that so yeah this is the board okay and this is the back this is basically well, one two three four and it fits the 2280 NVMe SSDs, okay? So you can basically install four NVMe SSDs, 2280s, and on this side with the PCIe, which is FPC cable uh, to, so this side is to two to Pi 5 and this PIP, so they call this PIP. It also accepts the five volt and there is a DC jack for that. I assume we have to plug something very high amp because this is five volt and it should uh, also, I think, should power up the Raspberry Pi, but I might be wrong. Not sure how I can mount this easily on, on the Raspberry Pi 5. Yeah, so this side, if we open this up, yeah, so you have to lift that up, the PIP side, we plug it insert that all the way and press it so yeah that's there and this side goes to pi 5. so i'm going to plug this in and try to power it with with the dc jack and then install four nvme ssds so there are some stands in here and i prepared four identical nvme ssds basically they are all one terabyte 980 pro let me put these together and uh, we are going to use one of the old Raspberry Pis that I had laying around that I use it for other stuff. Let me put this together and we take it from there. Okay, so we are back. And as you can see, I am powering it with this uh, Schnitt Power professional uh, Chinese power supply so I, I'm sorry I didn't have anything else that uh, that would have the same DC power jack and and can supply 5 volt 5 amp this is the only one I found basically I can fry the whole thing up by just dialing this so obviously don't do what I'm doing right so this is not a good uh, you know example to power this board but it it is working okay as you can see, it lights up the, uh, you know, four LEDs, so indicating that the four PCIe's that I connected is working. And if I show you this, you will be able to see the power consumption. So we are currently sitting at 5.8, 5.9, 6.6, 6, 7, 8 watts. So it is fluctuating in 6, 7, 8 watts. Let's go to the, uh, to the screen. So as you can see, this is the Raspberry Pi screen. And uh, I also, by the way, I inserted a 2.5 ethernet jack, uh, USB 3. So it's here connected through this adapter. So I want to make sure that I have 2.5 gigabit ethernet so I can do a NAS uh, copy paste uh, speed test because we've got like four NVMe SSDs, right? So USB 3, 2.5 and four NVMe SSD, each one terabyte connected and I installed Open Media Vault. Let's take a look at that. So by the way, this is the wiki page for that. There is a, the only thing that is highlighted and very important is that your either USB-C or USB-A uh, connector should be five volt, five amp. There are like a pogo pins in there. Power is coming from here, goes to the board, powers the NVMe SSDs, and also through those pogo pins, it is powering the uh, Raspberry Pi. Just be aware of that, okay? And through the PCIe lane, it is actually sending data. So now let's go to the admin panel. So this is the dashboard. 
and uh, let's take a look at the storage and disks and as you can see one two three four i see my four nvme ssds right here and we can go to the zfs and pull and create one very very quickly and uh, main data i keep calling that let's do it again now this time we can see the devices uh, i cleared and initialized them and uh, yeah ignore the mount point and compression and all that let's go error All right, so I figured it out. Uh, I just had to do DDIF uh, dev zero to my three, four disks. I had data on them and then I created the pool. Nothing special. So it is still the four disks. And then I was able to create a ZFS pool called data. And then I went to shared folders and I created the slash data slash shared. This is from the old test, so let's delete that. Yeah, so slash data slash shared data is basically what it is. And I went to the SMB and Samba share, I created shared data, okay? That is nothing special. And let's apply the last change, that's it. So if we go back now to my NAS. So as you can see, this is the same IP, 172.16.138. And also take a look at the watt and power consumption. And uh, let's go to my computer. I am, I have two files and this is a 2.5 gigabit e ethernet. And my computer is also 2.5. So let's go to share data and let's paste. Yep. So that's pretty much the speed. Uh, it is idling and that's the power consumption that goes to nine point something. Yeah, this is what I noticed. It keeps going down, up and, uh, and down. Uh, not sure if it is related to the board or something else. And I ensured that I'm using PCI Gen 3. So yeah, it's coming up back up. You see, it's going back up. Uh, but yeah, I, it's averaging 250, I guess. It's in a matter of a minute or so, I think it is able to copy you know 10 gigabit and uh yeah 230 240 250 and that's 10 watts so when you ramp up and use all discs it goes up and uh yeah if we do one more just to be sure i've seen you guys leaving comments do do tests with larger files so this is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet. I would do larger files when it is 10 gigabit ethernet, but this is fine for 2.5 G testing. And as you can see, averaging 200, 210, 220, 230, something like that. So it is kind of expected and it is doing its job as intended. And it is very handy. I, I like it. This is a portable uh, and you can build a 3D printed case, I guess, around it. I haven't seen one that's already out there, like in Thingiverse, but I'm sure so you, can, you can kind of design something for it, or maybe somebody already did. I just didn't find it. So, yeah, that's the speed for write. And if we do a speed uh, from, uh, let me rename this test one, two, from NAS, from this, not NAS, from Raspberry Pi to my computer. And again, we are getting the same speeds. So with 2.5G, you can, you can use like four NVMe SSDs and 2.5G adapter and get this uh, speed that you're seeing on the screen with Open Media Vault. And this is a $21. So Raspberry Pi is also eight gigabit. So this is 80, 80 bucks and this is 20 bucks. So this whole thing is a hundred bucks computer. This is the performance. With a 20, uh, 20 box uh, USB 3 uh, 2.5 adapter, let's call this 125 box computer with a 2.5G and uh, four NVMe SSD flash. So flash disk and flash drive. So yeah, that's the speed. And I just wanted to show you, it is all working. You can, uh, as, uh, we, you can always run Docker, Plex, all that stuff on this. And uh, I've, I've done that in the other video that I was talking about uh, building Raspberry Pi and Rock 5, uh, Rock 5A uh, and with the SATA uh, SSDs. And uh, yeah, so when it's idle, as you can see, it drops. The fan stops, it is, uh, it's not using the disks and it goes back to six watts. So 
Keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, that's a very low power, very powerful NAS, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's, it doesn't have anything, uh, you know, that a regular typical NAS doesn't have. So you have the 2.5G adapter, you have four NVMe SSDs, you have the boot disk, which is a SD card, and you have the cooling. Yeah, you just need a case and that's it. So yeah, it's working as intended. I just wanted to share this with you. And uh, as you can see on the screen, this is the device, uh, X1011 from Geekworm. If you have any questions, let me know, but it supports, uh, the, as you can see here, four full-size uh, M.2 2280. You can, you, there are screws uh, and holes. You can put a smaller one as well, but that's, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions regarding this board uh, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.